Fighting evil by moonlight Winning love by daylight Cheering you on at the campsite She is the one named Tamarine She will always fully heal all your friends In the race she's such a godsend She is the one on whom we can depend She is the one named Tamarine Fighting evil by moonlight Winning love by daylight Wins the war but she don't have to fight She is the one named Tamarine She is the one named Tamarine She is the one Tamarine Hey, yo, what is going on guys? I hope you like the intro. I spend a lot of time on it So if you did like it, please remember to like follow and subscribe and all that good stuff and watch those ads, baby Watch the ads. Oh, uh, all right. Um <laughs> Today we are here to talk about tamarine I've been asked to do a guide on tamarine for a long time and since the game has a nice little break period Which I would like to call it. It's a good time to go through tamarine and some other characters that were requested a while ago Tamarine is actually very special to me because she was a character that they did buff they did very slight buff to her but her the way that she works is exactly the same so without further ado get him a rinky dinky do we're gonna go to those base stats all right as you can see here we're looking at the the hp most likely because she is a soul weaver she's doing supportish type things so it's very important to know hp is important speed is important how fast is this character and we're going to be at 108 i mean if you really look at a lot of the the soul weavers in the game speed is one of their lower stats there's not that many of them that are naturally fast obviously they do have some that are as you can see Remember, people get outsped by Deanne. Deanne actually has 103 speed. Ah, look at that. See, mascot Hazel, 91 speed. I'm just going through other Soul Weavers that are very important in a lot of comps that you might see out there in the PvP realm. But Tamarine's actually not that slow. <laughs> She's not that slow in comparison. Obviously, there are, are thieves and stuff that are faster than there. But if you look at some of the other Soul Weavers, she's actually pretty okay. Like, <laughs> look at Angelica, man. Woo! I mean, and I just wanted to touch on this a little bit. It is really unfortunate that, not the speed, sorry, that she has one attack, two, and three. I don't really necessarily know why they ever did that. It just seems really strange that they gave her attack percentages. I think because actually her original design, she even gets attack thing is that originally um, her soul burn used to be like increase the damage that her s1 did and or something like that it's very strange they actually should go back and you guys should make some noise to fix our good girl tamarine up here i know she got a little bit buff but it was it was supposed to be this thing like when she s1 she was supposed to like kind of turn into this dps unit and yeah that just doesn't happen <laughs> just doesn't happen but yeah her awakening she doesn't really get too much out of it like she doesn't get any additional hp she doesn't get any additional like defense effectiveness oh if they at least turn those attacks into effectiveness she would be a dramatically better character but pretty much she gets speed that's the only relevant thing that she gets here is speed <laughs> speed is speed is where it's at so as far as that goes, those are just her base stats, and let's just get into the skills, which are the, the, the most important thing of this character, and it really fleshes out what she actually does, which a lot of you are aware of, but let's go by the basics. I'm scared. As you guys know, she has two different forms, so let's go over the base form, the regular, degular. All right, so her first form, is, well, it says, you, it says both, right, so I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm gonna do it my way anyway. So Tamarine attacks an enemy with a s serene melody and heals the ally with the lowest HP. Amount recovered increases proportional to the ally's max HP. Decreases the cooldown of Shining Star by one turn. So every time you're here, boop. Yes. 
That's how that works. You'll see the one turn decrease. I think I'm going to faint. And it will lower the cooldown of your S3, which is on a nine turn cooldown on base. And then if you Mologore it up, it will actually go down. So pretty much you're going to be using this whenever your S2 is not on cooldown. <laughs> That's pretty much how it is. Most people do not uh, Molagora this up really because as you can see, all it does is give damage and she is not a damager. She does not warrant damage. She is not like Dingo. They could have made her like uh, Blazing Dingo if they really wanted to, but they did not. She's not really meant for damage. So please don't bring your Molagoras in here. I mean, if you want to just be like, haha, check it out guys. I increase the damage of my tamarine i guess maybe so but no next then we're gonna go to the s2 tamarine style heals all allies with a peaceful melody amount recover increases proportional to the caster's max health decreases the cooldown of shining star by one turn so what's important about the s2 uh, go is that it scales off of her hp the reason eyes. why this is really important is that well, it scales off for her HP. So the S1 scales off the, the target's HP, so whoever they're getting. So let's say if, if you're healing a, a squishy attacker that doesn't have a lot of HP, you won't give them that good of a heal. But when it scales off of the caster's HP, then it allows you to actually, at that point, do beautiful things. And when I say beautiful things, like a fat stacked heal, 4,000, 5,000, if you get her HP high enough, and obviously if you Mologora this out, and obviously you're going to see a little bit later why you're going to want to do this one first if not second but obviously most people go on to the s3 which is the transformation station shining star before performing the, before performing she dispels all debuffs inflicted on allies and recovers the cast's hp to max hp it is a full heal and it can't pretty much be stopped because she dispels everything that's possibly on her and then she heals herself and she gets an extra turn the cast has become an idol for three turns and performs a concert begins the first battle with full cooldown uh full with full cooldown count so what it's basically saying is that when you start the fight you're going to start off with this on nine turn cooldown that is why the s2 and the s1 lower it each turn so if you guys don't know i'll probably show you an in-game reference just to have you guys know so pretty much every time she gets an actual turn this goes down by two turns and if you want to be technical if you have counter you have a chance to lower it with the s1 by lowering an additional one turn each time it's not your turn you get hit and you can counter back but we're going to talk more about that in the gear because I currently have mine on counter and I will give you guys my personal experience. But let's look at the Shining Star. Listen to my song. This is my stage. Personality change, more preppy, all that good stuff. You can see the little microphone here that lets you know you have three turns with it. Then you see now we see the sing together. And uh, well, I think they're called the same thing. But yeah, now it's this thing at the bottom, which is attacks all enemies with a beautiful voice, dispelling all buffs. Triggers a dual attack with the ally with the highest attack. Now, they had, like I said before, that it would, like, it's the soul burn was to, like, do more damage it was so awkward it was so weird so now the soul burn effect is to greatly recover hps it's a really fat stacked heal and yeah it, you just have someone pretty much attack with you it's it's great it's beautiful please do it as many times as you want sometimes i actually will forego the s2 and just spam the s1 especially depending on who your attacker is and it's also ba -ba -da -ba, means that when you're using tamarine you do have to be aware of who that person is who is your highest attacker and when you're using her i think you should synergize it with someone that is going to really benefit off of getting additional attacks luna would be a good example Bologna would be a good example characters that are really going to flourish with s1s mlr and mentha i mean the list goes on it's ridiculous so let's see it Lights. Camera. Boom, no one has both. Listen to me sing. <laughs> Listen to me sing. All right, now we have the climax with a powerful performance. Increased attack of all allies for two turns and increases combat readiness by 30%. Recovering HP. The amount, again, is based on her max HP. And as you can see here, it can go up to a fat stacked heal, which is obviously really good. And not only is the heal going up, the combat readiness push is going up as well. This is obviously why she's strong. You know, you turn into that if your team is too far behind or if they need a heal or if they need to attack buff, you know, all that good stuff. You can just pop the S2 and then when you get that turn, because now you're going to be at the 50% mark if this is maxed out, right? Then you're going to be pretty much getting another turn and then you can just spam S2 for the last two turns that you have. Or you can spam S1s 
the entire time for the three turns it's really up to you like sometimes i just go into this form just for the dispelling of the whole team it's a really good aoe dispel yeah and then just spend the s1 if you especially if you're running someone else like deanne that has the attack buff so you don't need to use this to attack buff or like i said if you need the the combat readiness push ladies and gentlemen I don't know, I've always loved that. That little, like, you can hear her sing. Shine free. Or is that like her background I, singers? I'm not exactly sure. I think I'm going to faint. And I feel like that's, a, it's like, that's exactly how a person feels after they perform. So, as you look here, now we're looking at the, the S3, the Shining Star. As you can see, it does disappear. Is that the only skill, the only Molagori you can is to reduce this by eight turns. So that would be initially four of her turns if you don't have any counter. Um, she gets four of her turns and pretty much is going to be on cooldown. Counter will make it somewhat shorter. That's all. That's pretty much all. Also, the names do change. I, I actually messed that up. So now this is the Song of the Forest. This is Serene Tune and the other one's called Sing Together. And then this one is called Song of the Forest. The other one is called Climax. So yeah, they do have different names. She, she actually has... You just kind of want to hold the S3 sometimes, in my opinion. Hold the S3, then plan out the S2 and the S1 when you really need it. So, obviously, you still want to Molagor the S, the S3. the Let's actually back out. You can see, like, it does cost a, a decent, hefty little price to do it. But this... <laughs> Oh man, 50% boost is kind of ridiculous. And the heal is really, really good. So, next thing after that, we're, of course, going to go into gear. Here is mine. I like to show mine because it's a little bit quicker if I do have the character. Uh, I do have her on counter. Now, the reason why I'm actually going to tell people not to run on counter is for that exact reason. There's really no rush to get her S3 off cooldown unless you're in some specific situation where you're going to need her alt as quick as possible. And I would say that that situation is very unlikely. This usually you're using her, her S2, the ability for her to just kind of keep a really, really consistent heal is probably better for your team than to just go into this mode and lose your AoE debuff and your attack buff and the push and all, all that stuff that you get is better to have that, in my opinion, when you really need it in, in comparison. So, but counter is still good. It is still good, but it's only really good in her idle form. The fact that you can counter and then dispel everyone's buff every time they hit you is ridiculous. So I can't say that counter is a bad thing but just keep in mind it's th this s1 doesn't really heal for much it would heal better if they gave it the same thing as destina see destina actually has skill ups that increase the healing of the of the move then it would actually be a lot better and then i would actually molagor it up but all you have here is damage skill ups they really should change it it would make her a dramatically better character and then the counter would be even better but at the moment yeah counter is good but it's really good in the idle form and that's about it so you're going dps we're going to go with the lifesteal just kidding speed is king and in this situation speed is queen i'm sorry guys i know you hate hearing it but speed is probably the best set on her she goes first and she gets additional turns, and as I said, you're eventually going to Molagor the S3. She just needs four turns. And if she is healing like a mad woman, pretty much that's all she really needs to be doing. Just keep your, your team up with the fat stack heal in the S2. Even if you were to go something like the candlestick, it really, really, really allows you to just kind of stay in the fight. There's not that many characters in the game or comps that really run like heal block and just fully healing everyone every time is ridiculous i will actually be switching mine over too is because you have control she gets more turns combat readiness is gonna feel amazing on her she's gonna get it's just better just to be completely honest with you counter is cool but i would switch it to a counter set that gives her speed or you can just run the speed set itself effective resistance is going to be a good one as well the worst thing that you can ever do is <laughs> go into Oh, imagine trying to S3 and then you're stunned. So it's just that that nature. Also, you know, if you need to get heal or have her stay healthy for the time being before she S3s and comes back to full health, you don't want to get heal blocked. You don't want that stuff. So effective resistance is a good set. But it's also, as I always will say, based on substats. It's always based on the substats. Keep that in mind. Don't just put effective resistance and the substats are not good. Like, look, what is this ring? God, this is terrible, but you got to keep every ring you get, right? That has good. But look at this ring. This is not something you'd want if it's like a left side gear or something like that. You definitely want some good stuff. Get some effective resistance as much as you can. HP set is going to be pretty good. If you can't get a good speed set or a good counter set, maybe go triple HP. Remember, her S2 scales off of her HP, so the higher you can get the stack 
back, mama, then you, that's, that's the best way to go all day, baby. Mm-hmm. Defense set, again, I always say this for any like Soul Weaver or a tank. You, if you go defense set, again, it's going to be mostly based on the substats. If you got some good uh, defense set, getting some free defense plus HP plus some effective resistance on the substats, it's pretty good. Don't don't ignore it, I would say. Same thing with immunity. But I would actually, for the first time in my life, say I don't, I don't know if you really need to go immunity on her because her bringing in Tamarine, you're looking to pretty much have a stally fight. You're bringing in more bruiser tankyish characters when you're thinking tamarine you're not thinking of tamarine to have a quick fight effectiveness is pretty good definitely remember she uh to strip those buffs on her s1 in idle form she does need effectiveness do not sleep on effectiveness you won't strip shit if she has bad effectiveness so she's a little hungry hp but pretty much all she does need is hp and effectiveness um and speed and everyone needs speed so that's not even like uh oh my god really so it's you know but you do need effectiveness to get that strip on the s1 keep that in mind and that's pretty much it after this i'm gonna have to go into the loveliness that is my favorite and you guys know it's my favorite it is the artifacts Rod of Amiris, as I said, remember her S3 is counted as a non-attack skill, so she can S3, she's going to fully heal herself, so she's obviously not going to receive that heal. Give someone a heal, and then S2, and heal and double heal. Not that bad on her, I do think that some of the other ones are a little bit better, but it does make her an insane little healing machine, and plus when she's S2ing, her S2 is on a two turn cooldown, please don't forget about that. So that is a lot of healing that she can dish out, an insane amount of healing that she is dishing out with a Rod of Amiris. So obviously really good if you got it. Shimadara Staff, increasing healing. And as I said, her S2 is a really good heal in standard form. And her S2 in also is the same scaling. They actually changed it. That was one of the buffs. That they're pretty much the same scaling as far as how they scale for HP. But it obviously allows her to do really good healing, whether she's in idle form or not. And Shimada Staff will just increase that overall heal. And of course, increase the heal on standard form S1. So that's another option if you just want to make her really, really annoying. I haven't seen that many of this people rocking this out. I could actually try it myself, but I think that there's still better options for her, unfortunately. Celestine. I only like Celestine on counterattack characters and then yes you can run town attack on tamarine um then you have like that double healing kind of effect and especially it's only going to be like at a lower percent this is a five star artifact we're talking about i mean if you can get that 16 percent, that'd be great obviously if you want to add more healing then if you're in idle form it's a dispel that still heals so it's just a lot again annoyance on annoyance and i feel like I, it's kind of hard to say that any of the Soul Weaver artifacts are even bad. Even I just said Shermata Staff, that's not bad at all. Don't even get me kidding that that's not bad. That This is great. I don't know. It's kind of hard. You can put on whatever you want. I guess it's just preference at that point. <laughs> all these Soul Weaver artifacts are good, on, especially on a stally Soul Weaver. Like, this is not a combat readiness push into death. This is a stall out and then finish off the fight at the right moment. Idol's Cheer, I think, is probably one of the best artifacts for a soul weaver just because of the fact that she has so much healing look she a little tasty you showing some skin girl um she just the fact that she does have a lot of great healing already that you can pretty much sit there and be annoying as hell and then if they happen to do aoe attacks multi-hitting attacks mlr mintha she attacks and then she does the aoe after and she does that both on on a soul weaver that's 20 percent combat readiness that she's gonna give out this is one of the best, especially if it's 20. Imagine you get every time you take a hit, 20, 40, 60. Your attacker, your highest attacker is pretty much going to get a turn. This is also really good for when you are doing counter comps and you might get outsped and they are doing some type of AoE like Araminta and you have like an immunity set. So, or you don't even need an immunity set. Just being in the fight with Idol's Cheer, your attacker can have the immunity set and now the attacker is going to get a turn because your Soul Weaver got hit. So it's really, really fucking amazing. And it's actually currently, in the time of me making this video, in the powder shop. So uh, if you don't have it, I definitely suggest that you do. This is one of the best Soul Weaver artifacts that came out. And it is hers, and it's for that reason. What is Origin? What is Origin is a little bit of a weird kind of math calculation that you have to do. It's only when you take a certain amount of damage you will recover and then get combat readiness. And that's just the whole weird part about it. You have to take a certain amount of damage in order for it to trigger. Well, meanwhile, there are all the other ones that we just mentioned and some of the other ones we're going to mention happen automatically. This just kind of just 
instantaneously happens. So uh, this is one of the better ones for tanking out stuff like the Wyvern. Certain bosses that you know are going to hit you for a certain amount of damage. You're going to get the combat readiness push, get extra turns. As you guys know, extra turns means quicker into your idle form, which is good. But I also have to argue, like I said, you don't really need the idle form immediately. It's having it up as soon as possible is still good. But I do think that some of the other artifacts are a little bit better than Water's Origin, unless you're trying to do something like tanking Wyvern or something of that nature. Wanderer's Potion is busted. I don't even, <laughs> it's so busted. It is literally, I'm surprised that it's not a five star artifact, but thank God it's a four star artifact so you have more chances of actually getting it. Come on guys, 100% chance to dispel one debuff from an ally at the beginning of, it, of the turn of the caster. Obviously amazing on fast soul weavers and it is currently in the powder shop so please go pick that up if you get the chance magara's tomb every time you use a non-attack seal you're pretty much going to get a nice really hefty combat rating this push and that's going to be great because obviously your s2 is on a very low cooldown so you can pretty much use your s2 even if everyone's kind of topped off you can just use it just to get an extra 15 percent combat readiness push for your next turn or 30 once you max it out and that's pretty much a way to cycle your turns a little bit quicker and you know get yourself in that position to one s3 again or just get your next s2 up just to have it off cooldown top everyone off and just keep everyone in a good spot like i've also said when i did my video on the queen of Amaris, she does do more stuff and there's a lot of actual i think uh, raid bosses and stuff like that that do stuff when you're half hp or they do more damage when you have hp so that's another way to kind of like keep people topped off you just have a s2 that you can use at will and an s1 with a good soul burn and you constantly keep yourself combat readiness push whenever you need to not use your s1 so pretty good three star artifacts as well let me just go straight into it egg of delusion is going to be a pretty good option for you because it just gives you free defense making you a little bit tankier while you're at full health and you're a healer really good option on healers egg of delusion uh, Pathetic Candlestick is good if you're again trying to go for the whole aspect of getting your alt up as quick as possible but as I've said I don't really necessarily know if you really need to keep your alt up that quickly. It is good to have it off a lot. It is a good tech. I hope that you guys don't think like oh the S3 is garbage. No. It's just that you're only going to need it on certain times. You don't need to use it every other turn. It's just that's just not how she really works. You don't need to use it every turn. You have to choose between her being a healer or debuffer when you need it. You know, that's kind of how it works. Envoy's pipe is actually really good as also, especially if you want her to be your frontliner. Sit there and just take some shots and then heal everybody up. And as soon as she like as, as soon as she gets too low, then she just can't really die. And then boom, she can S3 herself right back to full health and then heal everybody, give everyone the buffs. Just really good. I, I'm surprised this is not a four star artifact or anything like that. This is a really good artifact. I could also argue about Aqua Rose. She's going to be building a bunch of HP. Get a free shield every once in a while just to mitigate some damage to you. Not not totally against it, but not totally on board with it either comparison to the four and five star artifacts. And that's about it. So yeah, let me just go and we're going to do some team comps. Uh, some really good characters that I think mesh well with her immensely. First and foremost, I'm going to have to give a whole entire shout out to the thief category as an entire whole. Just because she has an automatic dual attack in idle form, she pretty much can trigger these people's uh, dust devils and then come in and then they'll do a dust devil and that might be a huge amount of DPS out of the park. So just, just a really cool thing to note, just a heads up there. I slightly mentioned this, Luna is a really good option because her S1 lowers the chance of her S3. So it just allows her to get additional free dual attacks, guaranteed dual attacks I should say, to lower her S1 to go into the S3. Soul is a good option because I know a lot of people now have soul because he's free so just imagine him constantly getting the s1 and it's critting so he gets the fighting spirit so then he can go into the Roman cancel and then get extra turns and then blah 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 blah, blah. just break the fuck off so it's a really good option for soul if you have him on the team and as we all know soul is really good for clearing a lot of PvE content currently yeah I mean seriously <laughs> one of the cooler ones that I did like and I wanted to mention in this video is Challenger Domino. Um, with her S2 passive that when people get crit, she gets um, readiness. Since she does have the idle form, she hits a bunch of people, they can all crit, give her additional attack and combat readiness, 
And not only that, it gives Seeker Challenger Domino also additional S1s that will do a chunk of damage, you know. So it's a really cool synergy to have both of them on the team. And since Challenger Domino will kind of help her out, you know, you have your Nuker. She's like a single target Nuker, and she's getting additional attacks in there as well. And you can also give the attack buff. She's giving the crit, and then have everybody else kind of just be like, you know, kind of supportish just to have these two not die. I think you guys get the point as far as like really good S1 characters, characters that either synergize with her force dual attacks or characters to pretty much keep her alive i can mention every single knight in the game that has a way to just pretty much keep her alive uh, with provokes cecilia is really good as well maya has provokes just ways to keep them off of her while she just sits there and does her thing and that's pretty much what you'd want for all your soul weavers if you choose to use a soul weaver they need to be protected because people will try to snipe them out so anything that makes it difficult for people to do that and that's what the whole knight classes about CR uh, Crimson Armin as well really k annoying characters keep your keep her alive Phyllis is a good one too. keep Tamarine alive but that's all I got for the lovely Tamarine what did you guys think about it what do you guys think about the character specifically I really would appreciate any like and comment if you guys uh, have any different builds that you guys gone or different experiences with the character I would love to hear it um, but yeah that's it for me I got some other characters that I want to review and look at that I know people want K-Ron I want to do Zeno so, got some characters to do. You guys are going to see more frequent uh, guides for this week coming through this week. So, leave those suggestions if you guys want. Maybe something might spark my interest. But, until then, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.